Hi there, and welcome to our introduction to financial modeling on Domino's Pizza. My name is Luis Romero, and I'm the founder of Romero Mentoring, where we provide advanced technical training to college students and professionals that want to continue to develop their skills. In this particular video, we're going to show you the step-by-step -step process that we apply in building the model on Domino's Pizza. Now, we've condensed the entire process to about 25, 28 minutes, but in reality, it took us about 10 to 12 hours to complete because we were explaining the terminology, we were looking at the SEC filing, understanding the company business model so that we can improve the level of accuracy in our financial model. So what you're getting to see here is more transparency and what the experience looks like for students in our program and also what professional analysts put together on Wall Street. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy it. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. All right, folks, and welcome to the continuation of setting up our model for Domino's Pizza. And if you recall, in the last video, we left right here. We completed the balance sheet. Historically, we managed to get it to balance, as you can see down here, row 97, okay? And we are now going to calculate our working capital ratios. So let's go ahead and go through that exercise. And after we complete this, then we're gonna advance and create our cash flow statement and the way we're going to create our capital space is going to be differently from the income statement and the balance sheet. We're actually going to build it from scratch, but we're not going to copy from the 10K. So once we get to that part, you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and calculate our working capital ratio. What have we done up to this point? You can see here in terms of model steps, set up your financial statements model, done. 
In the next lecture, we're going to start to forecast our income statement, followed by our depreciation schedule, working capital schedule, and every of the other steps that you familiarize yourself during module number one, two, three, four, and five. So all of this process now should get very familiar to you. Setting up the model was the first process of understanding how to actually lay out the income statement. Now we're gonna begin what you are more familiar with and what you learned in the first part of the program, which is really forecasting your, your model. So with that being said, I'll end the session here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye. All right, folks, and welcome to the continuation of our Domino Speaks a case study. And perhaps this is the moment that a lot of you have been waiting for, which is the modeling part of the case study. If you recall, in the last lecture, we finished completing the financial statements model by laying out the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash statement, the corresponding schedules, like the share buyback schedule, the debt schedule, and also the depreciation schedule. And today we're gonna to go ahead and continue with the next step of the process, which is to forecast our income statement and our depreciation schedule. By this point, you should have already familiarized yourself with each and every one of those steps and processes because you've already completed multiple models that you had to complete as part of your assignment in the first part of the program, phase one. So now that we are going to begin the modeling phase, I am going to move rather quickly so that we can move to the valuation part of the case study. So hopefully you're comfortable with modeling, you're comfortable with the steps, the terminologies, uh, the concepts, but more importantly, the techniques. And this is why you went through all of that training in the first part of the program. So let's get to it. how I can compare those two to end up making a, a final conclusion. But we can dive a little bit more into that once we dive into spreading comps and we get to see all the comparables for this particular company, okay? So we've completed our depreciation schedule. So the final thing I'm gonna do for this 
session is to go ahead and start perhaps including my Domino's Pizza logo. Why am I doing this? Because if you were to show this, if let's say if you're doing investment banking and you are working on a transaction for Domino's Pizza and the CEO or the CFO wants to see the financial model, the financial model has to look like a product. So that's why I started to add the logos for Domino's Pizza. So I'm gonna take this logo and I'm gonna add it here. And I'm gonna make it nice and pretty and consistent. Okay, this is part of me doing investment banking, right? We're gonna put it here, nice and consistent. Let's add another line. Let's add our logo. Instead of Romero mentoring, this would be perhaps your company logo, whether it's Goldman, JP Morgan, whatever the case may be, that would be the advisor logo. Now, another thing I'm gonna do, I am going to illustrate this in page break or print preview format. What does that mean? The shortcut is O-W-I or view page break, right here, page break. If I click page break, it says it up like this. Let me zoom in. This is how your depreciation schedule would print if you print this stuff out. We don't wanna print it in two pages. Look, see the print preview? This is not uh, legible. You may, it, it'll make my life a lot more difficult. So the way you wanna illustrate this it's just in one page. So I'm just gonna right, uh, left click on these grid lines right here. And I'm gonna hold it and drag it to the right. And this is now one page. And I also want to minimize this here and add this here and maybe bring my the logo down a little bit. Now, if I do the uh, print preview, looks like this. But of course, the format of the page, it's in what? It's in portrait mode, let's change it. Go to G, uh, page setup right here, G. You wanna put it in landscape and you wanna make sure fit to one page. Click okay, voila, nice and pretty, right? So when you have a very complex model where it's probably 20 or 30 pages, they can nicely print it out like this and it's like a pitch deck. And then we can flip through your model and audit your model and you can cross some of the numbers and make sure it makes sense. This is what you have to do before you submit your model to your associate or your VP or your managing director before it gets to the CEO or the board of directors. There is a chain of command before they get to see that model and this is the process. And it all starts with you because if it gets to the CEO and they find out big mistakes, what do you think is gonna happen? They're gonna tell the managing director. The managing director is gonna point the finger to the VP. The VP is gonna point the finger to the associate. And the associate is gonna point the finger to who? To you, the analyst. The bottom stops with you. <laughs> All right, folks, so I hope this has been helpful and insightful. And let me do this one. Let's see if we do, uh, uh, let's set up this page too. Yeah, you have to do that for each tab. Voila, nice and pretty. We're gonna, we're gonna do it for the income statement for last because there's multiple statements here and this is gonna be several pages. So we're gonna do that for, for last. We're gonna leave this one for last. So with that being said, I'll end the session here. And then in the next session, what are we gonna do? We're going to complete our working capital assumption. We're gonna forecast our assets and liability and we're gonna try to reconcile the balance sheet with the cash flow statement. So steps four, five, six, and seven we're going to do in the next session, all right? So with that being said, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Later, bye. Hey guys, and welcome to the continuation of our financial model in our Domino's Pizza investment case. And if you recall from the last lecture, we've completed our income statement, we forecasted the income statement, we also completed our depreciation schedule, and in this session, we're gonna continue with forecasting our balance sheet, reconciling it with the cash flow statement and getting our balance sheet to balance. And of course, if we have time, we're gonna complete the dividend and the shares repurchase schedule. So if we pay close attention to our screen here and look at modeling steps, we are going to aim to complete steps four through seven. And as I mentioned, Earlier, if we have enough time, we'll complete steps eight and nine, the dividend payout ratio and your shares repurchase. Before I continue, let me go back to our cover page and just point out uh, two things. Number one, hard course. This should actually be hard coded 
and also on the corporate valuation, compare company analysis, it's actually misspelled. So just quickly, let's go ahead and fix that. Press F7 if you have a PC to run spell check. So analysis, let's change that. And it should be hard codes. Change that, okay, good. And everything else is fine. So you always wanna make sure that you are double checking your work, spell, spell checks before you have a complete model with the valuation, essentially before it goes out to the client. Uh, and of course there's layers of checks and balances where your associate or your VP will actually review your model be, before it goes out uh, externally to a client. So with that being said, let's dive right into the model and forecast our balance sheet. steps cross that out and then we have our shares repurchase our debt schedule and interest scenarios and sanity check so I'm gonna pause the video here make sure that you're balancing your cash flow statement with the numbers I have listed uh, on the screen here the same applies to your balance sheet make sure that this also balances with what you have and in the next session we're going to complete the remainder of the model. We're gonna do sanity check, and that's gonna be the final part before we advance to valuation. And in valuation, we're gonna spread our comps, we're gonna do comparable company analysis, DCF, perhaps president transaction, and we might even do an LBO, uh, quick and dirty um, valuation methodology. I'm gonna show you how we actually do that to account in our valuation ranges and also in our football field. All right, folks, so with that being said, I'll end the session here, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, folks, and welcome to the continuation of our operating model in our Domino's Pizza investment case. And we're hoping to complete the operating model today. If you recall, in the last session, we left off with our shares repurchase schedule. So we pay attention to our screen and change tabs. You can see here, under model steps, we left off here, step number nine. So I'm hoping that we can complete all of this by the, in, in this session and then perform some sanity check, make sure that our assumptions and our margins are a little bit more in line with consensus and also sanity check with research reports. And this would hopefully conclude the operating model on Domino's Pizza, which we're gonna use to perform valuation, DCF and comparable company analysis. So with that being said, let's dive into the model and continue with our shares repurchase schedule.
which their numbers are accounted for right here in this consensus number. Now, to take it up another level, if you're really good, if you were to work for me as a full-time analyst, you would have a schedule for every single one of these line items. You will know the company as good, if not as be if not better than the CEO. Because when you have that level of insight and understanding about the business, then your level of accuracy increases because you're accounting for everything. And when I mean you're accounting for everything, I'm referring to this, the operational part of the business. Remember when we're doing due diligence? We talked about all of this. This is what you need to understand. And you will have a schedule for every single one of these things, which impact your income statement. Most analysts don't understand this and they don't do this. And I want you to understand it so that in the future, whether you do an investment banking, equity research, or you get to go to the buy side and bypass investment banking because of this level of training, your degree of understanding is much higher than someone that has five years of professional experience. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. When you see the financial side of the equation, the income statement, and then you can combine it with the operational side of the business and understand how the CEO thinks about it and what are the numbers that he's looking at, you combine those two together, your degree of accuracy increases exponentially. It's so important that you understand that. Why? Because I did not understand this when I was in your shoes, when I was an M&A analyst, which by the way, it's perhaps the toughest group to get into. And even when I was uh, an equity trader at a hedge fund, these were things that I didn't understand because I didn't have the experience. And I started to develop this perspective once I started to invest, start my own fund, and build my own organization on the Romero Capital and Romero Mentoring. It's the operational side. It's the entrepreneurship perspective that a lot of us are missing. So hopefully you can develop that habit of viewing things through multiple lenses and different perspectives. Uh, and hopefully you can increase and, and enhance your, your education experience. All right. So let's go back to our model and go back here to the steps. So scenarios, cross that out. Insanity check. We just did that by comparing it with Wall Street consensus and other research analysts. So this wraps up and concludes the operating model for Domino's Pizza. In the next section, we're going to focus more on valuation. And then ultimately, spread comps, DCF, and we're gonna be able to come back to the store buildup. And you see here how I have market share and industry numbers. We're gonna come back to this because this is very important. But we're gonna come back to it once we complete our valuation. And then we're gonna be able to forecast all these other line items that we've created here under our store buildup, okay? So we'll hold off this section until towards the end because I need to explain to you what size of industry market share the company has and how does it increase under the street case and under the Romero mentoring case or the upside case. This is very important because gaining market share ultimately drives your valuation, believe it or not. So with that being said, I'll end the session here and I'll see you in the next one. And make sure to pause the video if you need to get more insight into these scenarios and into these uh, analysis. And we're gonna work a little bit, we're gonna massage the Romero case and the upside case once we get into the DCF part. All right, folks. So I'll end it here and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, goodbye.